Next on the College Rugby Wrap-Up, surveying the American college rugby landscape, soup to nuts, playoffs, you name it, we got it, men and women. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Box for Grow, the future of cannabis farming. We box you in to increase your yield and profit. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pump, and Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hey everybody and welcome back to the College Rugby Wrap-Up. That's right, Rugby Wrap-Up's College Show. And I am here, Matt McCarthy in New York City, along with Mr. Colby Marshall, the Iona legend, and Holy Cross's second most famous rugby alumni, Zach Lanning. Gentlemen, welcome. Hey guys. Hi guys, happy to be here. Oh, you guys look thrilled and I love it. Every second of it. But guys, before we start talking about the the college rugby scene, we got to address that thing that happened in Washington, D.C. between the All Blacks and Team USA. So instead of us going down that rabbit hole, we went down that rabbit hole with Tony Ridnell, Eagle number 168, and Rick Salizzo, the honcho big shot executive from Rugby United New York and Major League Rugby. They had very differing views on that weekend and that match. And for those of you that are slamming your fists in harumph and saying, ah, this is just killing uh, rugby in America and the American rugby landscape is going nowhere. It's not growing. Well, you might want to turn the channel because we've got so much college rugby to cover that we have a college rugby show. And with that... Here's Holy Cross Hellraiser, Zach Lanning, with college players with the USA Rugby Selects that are currently playing in South America, trying to make the national team. Zach. You got it, Matt. Yeah, so plenty of collegiate talent in the States that are taking or stepping up, you know, and trying to get uh, to play some international rugby, take on some, you know, the international competition and earn their spot on the, the national team, the Eagles roster, as you saw a, a former collegiate player, uh, Tavite Lepetti, do very recently as well. So this recently, they've been playing in the America's Pacific Challenge, which is a great showcase for young talent in the U.S. Uh, and around, you know, the Americas as well in South America. There are six teams in two pools, the United States, Paraguay, and Uruguay in one pool, Argentina, Brazil, and Chile in the other pool, the Chile A-side. And they combine uh, to, to play each other against in these matches here. And it requires that 80 percent of these rosters be 23 or younger. So there are a you know, it's a great showcase for young talent. And that was, you know, that was definitely on display for the U.S. in, in that in those matches. And Zach, who are the players that are on this uh, select side from the colleges? Right. So you have a lot of players who are currently in school. Most, if not all of these players are, are from DNA schools, which I think we'll get into a little bit later in this show. And so they're not playing their 15s right now. They're going to play in the spring. Uh, so you see a lot of, of people uh, from, from schools like UCLA, St. Mary's, a huge group of players from Central Washington University. Uh, the number one of those being Yvonne Pula, the prop. Uh, but yeah, as I mentioned, Shane Barry, the fly half from UCLA, who played well in that match, started against Brazil. Uh, Jack Wendling and T.I. Vavau from Central Washington played in the back line. Uh, and a couple other members from Davenport University um, and Cal Berkeley, you know, in, in the reserves for that. Uh, but Matt, you had also seen some familiar names who were former college stars who have been drafted are now playing in the MLR or will soon play in the MLR. So names you might recognize from this most recent draft, Eric Naposki Abdullah, the number one overall pick from UCLA, who went to the Dallas Jackals, Kale Hodgson, Joseph Baki and George Sharp, uh, hookers that are playing for Utah and Nola Gold, respectively. And then some players from the first draft as well in 2020, uh, Brian Nault, the prop, Justin Johnson, Patrick Madden, who converted a bunch of penalty kicks in this match against Brazil. Uh, so all this collegiate talent on display for this USA select side. Unfortunately, they lost, Matt, uh, but they have another match against Chile A side coming up soon to hopefully redeem themselves um, and give us a little preview of what's to come when the Eagles take on Chile for their shot at qualifying for the next World Cup. Chile A, A, A. Excellent. We got, we got that down. All right. And that allows me to go back to the USA versus New Zealand match for, for, for two purposes here on the college front. And that is one, we had a thrilling Army versus Navy curtain raiser with Army winning at the death by a try. Just an amazing match. But almost or more significantly, we had what we call a college conclave of the powers that be 
in the college rugby space in America, which include D1A and the NCR, USA Rugby and the USMLR, Major League Rugby, were all in a room. And while we didn't see any of that smoke billowing from the chimney from that college conclave, I do know, and my sources tell me, although they're not telling me much, that they are closer than ever to uniting the tribes and having one men's collegiate rugby entity, which would benefit everyone, including sponsors and networks. But let's get back to what's going on right now, specifically in the NCR. Colby, tell us what we got. Yeah, exciting times in the college rugby landscape. We know that the quarterfinals for the NCR playoffs will take place on November 20th, and the semifinal matches are going to take place on December 4th. Uh, We know that the home teams are going to be the top seeds, uh, or we might see neutral venues take place in those matches as well. All right, so Colby, what about your, your Liberty Conference guys? Yeah, so the matchups are all set for the Liberty Conference playoffs. In one set of the semifinals, we have Iona playing against Syracuse, two undefeated sides. Uh, throughout this season, Iona got their last win against Albany, 91-0. to zero. It was a really nice bounce-back win after losing to Indiana. And Syracuse won over Nazareth, so this should be a super dandy matchup on Sunday at Mazzella Field in New Rochelle, New York. On the other side, we'll have Fordham playing against Northeastern. You know, Fordham made this playoff as a wild card team. They got the point differential edge over Fairfield by 14 points to be exact. So they'll go against Northeastern, who were undefeated and were really, I would say, the most dominant team in the Liberty Conference. They put up 332 points in total and only gave up 66, which is good for a 266-point differential. So that should be um, a tough game for Fordham, but we'll see if they can come away with a victory. I will say that uh, Syracuse's undefeated season is under uh, scrutiny from yours truly because I think the game against the University at Buffalo was fixed. But we'll, we'll, we'll address that in a future issue. But uh, we got to take a quick break. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. I've been blind since I was four, and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste, and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. back zach let's go over to the d1a and and as people may or may not know d1a is basically teams on the west of the mississippi and the ncr is on is basically teams on the east of the mississippi but enlighten us further right so d1a is the official usa rugby sanctioned college division in the country. And it contains many of the programs that you probably think of when you think of college rugby, you know, these top tier teams. And we've seen the most late, the latest, the the most recent ranking, excuse me, that's come out uh, on the 25th of October that lists these teams uh, in the order that I guess you would expect to see them with Cal coming in number one, life coming in number two, St. Mary's at three, Lindenwood at four and then army at five, which we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, But, you know, it's interesting to see these rankings out here like this, as these teams really have not played a lot of rugby so far or any in the fall here at 15s, at least Uh, Cal looked incredibly dominant in a sevens tournament this fall, but again, no 15s life has had a pretty light preseason schedule uh, that's set to begin in November, but they're always a highly competitive side. Uh, But so these are kind of the top tier programs that are out in the West coast and they're ranked in, in this you know, order that you, again, would expect. Colby, in a hypothetical world, if the two entities were to become one entity and NCR and D1A were to combine forces and become you know, whatever you want to call it, what would the rankings kind of look like? And I know this is an impossible question. 
Yeah, Matt, uh, loosely put, you could look at the rankings in the D1A and say those top nine teams could simply go ahead of St. Bonaventure, who are at number one in the NCR. You know, when you think about the games that we've seen this season, St. Bonaventure lost both Army and Navy. So it would make sense to have those two teams ahead of them. Again, this is still all up in the air, but this would be maybe an easier way to look at things uh, for now at the moment. But correct me if I'm wrong, but you've got a team like Dartmouth who knocked off Army, right? So, I mean, that would completely throw the rankings asunder. Yeah, Dartmouth are a team. They've been undefeated all season. and They've been in those conversations as being in the top three teams among the NCR squad. So you expect to see them there. Not really sure why they're not in the latest rankings that came out, but you expect to see Dartmouth in the top three at the least. You know, Colby, maybe uh, the powers of B wanted to leave Dartmouth out of that last ranking because they're smart and good at rugby and they're just jealous. And speaking of smart and good at rugby, let's go back to Zach. And Zach, we're going to take heat for not covering the women's game. Uh, oh, wait, we are covering the women's game. In fact, we leave the best for last, specifically the NCAA sanctioned women's game. Take it away, Zach. Well, thanks for the compliment. I really appreciate it. Uh, but we will start talking about people who are much smarter and better at rugby than I am here with the Naira teams uh, and Harvard and Dartmouth specifically. Uh, this weekend, this past weekend, those two teams met on the pitch to settle once and for all this regular season who was the top team in Naira. Both teams coming in undefeated. Harvard probably favored a bit in this matchup just because they had really dominated opponents all year, uh, rolling over a really capable Brown side a week or so earlier. Dartmouth undefeated as well, as I mentioned, but a little less convincing wins. Uh, they, they eked one out against Army a little bit earlier in the year, another competitive side in Naira. Uh, but when the two teams met this past weekend, it was Dartmouth that came out victorious, sealing their number one spot in the Naira standings uh, with a really convincing 45-31 to 31 win over Harvard. Their back line uh, with Emily Henrik, just a bunch of really talented players uh, on that back line were too much for Harvard to handle. Uh, both teams have one game left this season, Matt. Dartmouth will be taking on that Brown team. So that could be, a, you know, a slip up match for them. If they fall to Brown, uh, Harvard will be taking on army who again is a really tough side as well. So we could see some things shake up here before the season's over, but these two teams are expected to meet again in the championship round of the Naira playoffs. So because of the nature of the beast, I got to ask you, what about outside of Naira? Is there any women's competitions going on there? Right. Well, so you have the D1 elite, Matt, which is a group of really the top programs on the women's side. Uh, but those teams have not really been active so far in the fall. You have a few matchups. Life uh, beat Penn State in, in what was more of an exhibition match in September. Uh, and Life also lost to Lindenwood earlier this month. But other than that, other than that there has really not been uh, much action from those top teams. You should expect to see more from them later in the fall and then also in the spring. Uh, but there is an interesting match coming up this weekend, Matt. Penn State, a perennial powerhouse, is going to be taking on Davenport, uh, who is undefeated so far in the Big Ten, has just rolled over opponents, scoring 100 points regularly, not giving up more than 7 or 10 points uh, in their matches here. So this will be a great test for Penn State to prove that they're still one of the top programs in the nation and also a great opportunity for Davenport to really show that they can hang with these top-tier programs in the women's game. That should be a good one to watch. That's you know, those are those are two machines going at each other, right? Yes, definitely some quality programs with a lot of really, really great play, a lot of great athletes on the pitch. It's going to be a, a great match to watch. And guys, before but before we go, uh, I want to let fans know that they can actually pick against spreads uh, that Joey Rasmus and the analytics team at Silverbacks Elite Rugby came up with. That, of course, is the new long term development, high performance program in the Midwest and they have nothing else to do but come up with algorithm algorithms and math that that make spreads and and point spread make point spreads for these matches so go ahead and pick there's a lot there's a link at the bottom of your screen but we are definitely out of time and I want to thank Mr. Colby Marshall and Mr. Zach Lanning I'm Matt McCarthy on behalf of these gentlemen make sure you check out the college rugby wrap up every week and check out our other segments, including our spirited segment with Eagle 168, Tony Riddell and Rugby United New York executive Rick Salizzo read the All Blacks dismantling of Team USA, our interview with Kevin Flynn, co-founder of the XV Series and upcoming United Rugby Championship shows.